AI video editing tools are on the rise and Premiere Pro comes with a lot of built-in AI tools that you can use to really speed up your video editing process. So in this video, I'm gonna go over five AI tools inside Premiere Pro that you can use to speed up your workflow. So I have a Premiere Pro project open and the first tool I'm gonna to go over is called the Remix tool. If you go to the Ripple Edit tool, just long hold on the Ripple Edit tool and then go down to Remix tool. The Remix tool is a pretty cool tool where you can change any music's length to fit a certain video. So for example here, I have a travel video with some B-roll and it's only one minute long. And the song underneath it is about three minutes. And what I want to do is just shorten it to only be a minute long. Now you can edit this manually, but the Remix tool really helps you save time by just automatically changing the song's length to be one minute long. There's a few ways you can go about this. With the Remix tool selected, you can just click and drag on the right side, and then just drag to the left to the desired length. Premiere Pro will then use AI technology to remix the song automatically. And you'll notice that the Essential Sound panel has opened up as well. If you expand that menu and you click on the song, you'll see some options under the Duration tab. You have Remix and Stretch. You'll wanna leave it on Remix. Stretch just speeds up or slows down your song. And you can see here our target length. If you wanted to be more specific, you can choose the actual length to be a minute instead. And then there are customized options down below. You'll notice if we zoom in on the timeline, there's these little squigglies and these little squiggly lines represent where Premiere Pro is remixing the song to different parts of the song in order to make it shorter. But say if you wanted fewer segments or fewer song changes, you can drag the slider to the left and you'll notice that when Premiere Pro updates the song in the timeline, now there's only like one squiggly line. So it only remixes it once. Where if you click and drag this line to the right, you'll see a lot more squiggly lines where it remixes more often. Now in my personal experience using this tool, I prefer fewer segments. That way you don't notice the remix happen as much. For example, if we leave it at 10 and we go over to this part and play it back, you'll notice how the song changes quite a bit. Whereas if we slid it to the left and then click play, there's only one area where the song changes. And then if we leave it somewhere in the middle, we'll just double tap to have that dot go back in the center. So as you can see, sometimes you notice it, sometimes you don't notice it. Really depends on the song as well. There's another option that you can change. You'll notice that there's a variations option. I usually like changing it to melodic. To me, it just sounds a little bit better, but it really depends on your own song. The next tool I'm gonna to go over is a pretty cool tool, especially if you work with string outs or already exported video projects that you wanna go back into. For example, here on my timeline, I shot a video going over some sound panels and I shot some B-roll in this video, but Instead of trying to navigate through the timeline and find out where those B-roll clips are at the exact edit points, what you can use is called Scene Edit Detection. To get to that menu, you can right click on a clip, scroll down and go to Scene Edit Detection. You'll notice a few options here. I recommend checking the box next to apply a cut at each detected cut point. Then there's these two options as well. I'm gonna leave them all checked and I'll go over kind of what happens here. When you click Analyze, what Adobe does is it analyzes the footage and it applies a cut at each detected cut point as well as a marker. And then it's also gonna take those cuts or those clips and put them in their own bin in the project panel. All right, now that we can see that it is complete, you can see that Premiere Pro made a bunch of cuts in the timeline here. So if we hit the down and up arrows on our keyboard, you can see how at each edit point, it made a cut and it also added a pink marker here. So now I can easily navigate the timeline and see where those B-roll clips were and reuse them as I wish in a Premiere Pro project. And you'll also see here to the left inside the project panel, you'll notice that it created a new bin and that each B-roll clip is its own sub clip here in this bin. So if we double click on one, you can see that it's its own clip here in the source monitor. The next one is really helpful if you work with subtitles or captions. Premiere Pro automatically comes with a transcription tool that can automatically transcribe your sequence. To see how that works, you'll want to change your workspace from editing to captions and graphics. 
This will open up the text window. If you don't see the text window, just go up to window text. Once you're in the text window, just be sure you're under the transcribe tab and you'll notice this button that says transcribe sequence. When you click it, you can choose your language that your video is recorded in. In my case, it's English. Then under audio track, you can choose which audio track that the voiceover or recording is on. In this case, it's audio one. And then I'm gonna click transcribe. And what you'll notice here is Adobe renders out the audio and then it transcribes it on the device. And once it's done, you'll notice that the transcription loads inside the transcript menu here. Now you can see that it transcribed our sequence. And when we click on a word, you'll notice that our playhead will move to that area. Now you'll notice that if you double click in here, you can edit it so you can make changes if there's mistakes in the spelling and how it picked up your voice. You'll also notice that there's these three little dots here that indicates that there's spaces or gaps. And after I recorded this video, Premiere Pro came out with text-based editing in the latest public release. So if you wanna check out how to use that new feature, I did make a video going over that. I will link that video right up there. All right, so next let's take a look at some color correcting AI tools. First, change your workspace from captions and graphics to color. One of the first and coolest tools that you can do to automatically color correct your footage is that under basic color correction, there's this little auto button. When you click it, Adobe Sensei will automatically color correct your footage for you. One common thing when you video edit is sometimes you wanna match the color from one clip to another. So for example here, I have some B-roll clips I really like the way this shot looks and I want to match it a little bit better to this shot. So I want to copy the grade from this shot to this shot. And to do that, what you'll want to do is go under color wheels and match and then click the comparison view button. Make sure that the reference point is over the clip that you want to copy the grade of. And then click on your clip in the timeline that you want to change and then click apply match. You'll notice that Adobe automatically copies the color properties from the reference clip to the current clip here. And then you can uncheck comparison view, go back to normal view. Maybe you go back into color, basic color correction. You can bring up the contrast. You can make some adjustments and really fine tune it to get it looking very similar to the shot. So it has a nice orange overlay type of look. And if we compare it from before, it came a long way in just a matter of a few seconds here. The next tool is pretty cool if you need to track objects in your scene. For example, here I have a B-roll clip of people walking and we want to blur out this guy's face because he's not really supposed to be in the scene here. What we can do is add a mosaic effect by going to our effects panel, typing in mosaic, and we'll click and drag this to our clip. We'll change inside the effects controls, the values here to 20. And then you'll notice that you have some masking options. Just click on the ellipsis mask and then move it over this person's face. Adjust the size of the mask by just clicking and dragging on these edges. Then just make sure to finally align it to his face. And then what you'll notice is that there's these little mask path tracking options here. What I also wanna point out about this tool is that there's a little, little wrench icon you can click on. For example, you can do position only, position and rotation, position scale and rotation. If you do position, it'll go a little quicker from my experience using the tool. So that will be what I select for this example. What you can do is click on this track selected mask forward button and Premiere Pro will use AI to track the person's face throughout your timeline. This is very helpful because otherwise you'd have to manually keyframe the mask path over time. All right, now that has finished, what you can notice here is when we play back the footage, the mask automatically tracks to the person's face. No matter where he goes on the screen, you'll always follow him. So that's some AI tools inside Premiere Pro. If you wanna learn more about video editing, there are several tutorials on my channel. I'll link one that you might like right up there. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.